all of you seated here in the sanctuary, as well as those who are tuned in on our YouTube uh, live stream, I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. And welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service here at the Senior Woods Church of Christ. Here at the Senior Woods Church of Christ, we are a non denominational, multi generational, multicultural church Amen. whose teachings and practices are based on the Word of God. Uh, today's lesson is entitled Finding Fresh Fire. Okay. And it will be part one of a three part series. We encourage all of our uh, virtual viewers to view our YouTube commercial to obtain more congregational information as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel to remain connected to this church. Uh, we extend our deepest sympathies to the Childers family on the passing of Brother Terry Childers. Uh, please continue to pray for the Ezra Blunt family as this is the family whose nine-year-old son was trampled at the Astro World Festival concert. Uh, this family resides in our Sydney Woods community and they're requesting our prayers for family unity. We also like to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to those celebrating in the month of December. Uh, special blessings to Sister Wanda Martin. Yay! And I like to say also to my wife, her birthday is in December also. Please mark your calendars and save the date for our annual Couples and Friends Scholarship Gala, which has been set for Saturday, April 30th, 2022. For additional information, contact us to Bernadette Mark. Uh, this month's Wednesday Night Learning Class series will be instructed and facilitated by myself. Right. And on um, Wednesday, we're going to close out that series of Church of Christ Built. And uh, I think the last lesson is going to be entitled, The Church is Not a Utopia. So I'm inviting everybody, please tune in. That's going to be a good lesson. So tune in on uh, Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Okay. The Senior Woods Church of Christ will remain in a soft reopening mode until further notice. Stay connected to this church through the CineWoodsCoc.com website for additional updates. Uh, we're asking that each attendee not congregate on the church grounds and immediately proceed to your car after dismissal. And this is to ensure a safe worship experience for the vaccinated as well as those not vaccinated. For those who are streaming our morning services and are not able to physically attend the services, those members and guests can now post their names and our requests in our streaming chat box in order to receive public prayer. Simply state a name or a request and it'll be prayed over during the main prayer section of the worship service. Start placing your names and our requests in the chat box. And you can do that right now. Uh, for those members and guests who are in attendance or in person worship, and have a prayer or confession request, please complete a prayer and confession card and return it to an usher. Please go to our church website at scenicwoodscoc.com and complete the Operation Reconnect survey. The survey will be a key towards connecting to the needs and lives of our members and guests. Get we'll ready for a greater push. If you'd like to work on this committee, of discovery, then please contact Sister Karen Ram. Please know that your prayer and praise notifications, CineWoodsCoc.com website, can now be viewed through your regular email account. These notifications will encourage and strengthen your prayer requests and praise reports. As we all prepare for greater fruit in 2022, we ask that all members and guests. Know and support our year long congregational theme of finding fresh fire by our Father. That's all the, the announcements I have at this time. I ask that you would turn with me 
to Psalms, the ninth chapter. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. And we're going to use this as our uh, motivation for worship this morning. And that's Psalms 9, verses 1 and 2. And I will be reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. And the scripture reads as this. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonder. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. This concludes the reading of the scripture. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. All right, we're going to see just a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. If you ready, let us sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. And it made my heart in love and love my name above. And just a little which Jesus made me hold. And let us have and let us tell. And well, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. You know I go to Him, in, and He knows my every care. But just a little, when Jesus makes it right, now let us have and let us take. I 
I'll live on. I'll live on. I'll live on. And if you have it, and if you're ready, let us sing. Tis a sweet and glorious thought that comes to me. I'll live on. Yes, I'll live on. Jesus saved my soul from death and now I'm free. I'll live on. Yes, I'll live on. I'll live on. Yes, I live on through eternity. I live on. I live on. Yes, I live on through eternity. I I believe in your word, I believe everything, 
Love is bubbling over. Love is bubbling over. <clears throat> and if you're ready, let us sing. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. I've been running since I met a star. You know my days are brighter. My burdens are lighter. You know that love is a bubbling over in my yes, in my keep singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you know I've been running ever since I made a start. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, oh
is gonna make my burdens You know that love is Yes in my, yes in my Keep singing hallelujah Say glory hallelujah Don't you know I've been running every Since I made a start You know my days are King Jesus is gonna make my burden Never die, 
Yes, we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing hallelujah. By and by. We'll say that, oh, what joy. Oh, what joy when we get home. Yes, we're gonna rest. Rest beneath that cloud. Yes, we're on. Oh, We're gonna sing, we're gonna sing hallelujah by and by. Amen. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Wonder if you understand just how blessed you are today. Amen, brother. Uh, if your house was not destroyed by a tornado, say amen to that. You had uh, multiple tornadoes, Brother Greg, yeah. that touched in six states, Randy. Yeah. And just devastated so much property. Yeah. But here you are huh. in a beautiful church. Okay. Here you are in your beautiful home. Have you thanked God today Thank that your house is still standing? God could have sent the hurricane your way yeah. or the tornado rather your way. But uh, he blessed us this time. And so we do pray for those yeah. who, um, who lost everything. You know how devastating it is to, uh, to work your whole life for something and then to see it instantly taken away just like that. Think about all that you work for, the house that you live in, yeah. the car. The pictures, the pots, the pans, and to see all of that gone instantly, I'm sure just has to hurt. Inside my house is just not my furniture, but it's also my memories. You know, the good times that we've had in the home and to see a grown man break down and cry. Well, I feel that because Sister Penda, I'd be crying too. Because, boy, you've done so much in your homes. That's the car you took your kids to Disneyland in. You went to Galveston in. And now all of it is gone. Can you thank God for what you have today? Can you say amen to that? I really do thank him. And again, please keep those who have lost everything in your prayers. Can you do that? Boy, put, put that in your chat box right there, if you're in li online, that I'm going to pray for those that lost everything in six states. If you would, please stand for the reading of our introductory scripture. And boy, I am already fired up, already. I, I, I'm not going to wait on this one, Sister Karen. I, I'm ready to go. I need you to get your Bibles and turn it to Matthew chapter 24, and we will look at verse number 13. Matthew, there it is. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 13, talking about finding greater, here it is, Fire! That's what it's about. I need you to say ouch today when that fire starts to burn because it's important. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 13, the new uh, international version puts it just like this. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. But the one who dares to stand firm until his life is over, guess what? That person will be saved. Before you take your seat in the sanctuary today or at home, irrespective to where you are, perhaps even in Turkey, serving your country or Italy, I need you to ask yourselves two questions. One. Has life beaten the fire out of me? And two, have my life experiences actually increased my fire for God? Has life beat me 
like a drum. All that I've had to go through in life, the ups and downs and changes and turnarounds, has it taken my fire away? I used to be on fire for God. But now that's not the way it is. My fire has been diminished. What's wrong with me? God hasn't changed, so that means I have changed. Or perhaps you are seeing it this way. Yes, I have been through it in life. And yes, I have had disappointments in life. But baby, hear this clearly. My experiences have grown my fire. Yeah. My fire is not small for God. It is an inferno. My problems have not made me bitter. My problems have made me better. Okay. Which one is you? Where is your fire for God today? Are you on fire or are you in a ice cube? Are you in an igloo today? All that God has given you, I want you to know that yes, life will give you ups and downs, but I want you to have the fire that will melt any ice cube. Amen, and at the Christ. end of the day, if you stay faithful to God, heaven will be your home. Please take your seat and enjoy your worship on today. Man, I'm talking about something that has an ouch factor to it. Something that uh, may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it's something that we simply have to get to. If I was to ask you, you know, you about you, okay. Randy, if I was to ask you to tell me something about yourself, how would you answer that? Um, I mean, uh, where are you from? And perhaps more importantly, where do you plan to go in life? Thought about that, Keisha. I know you're 15. Where do you plan to go in life? When you get old and 56 and half ball like, well, maybe 40% uh, ball. I ain't going to go with that one. 40% ball like me. Uh, where do you plan to be in life? What do you like to do or perhaps what do you hate to do? Well, I'm from Austin, Texas, and I got to tell you, I just love and enjoy cooking barbecue. I can cook barbecue better than Brother Mosley there. Now, he's going to tell, well, I tell you, he had, uh, Sister Mosley, he said that he won some contest in barbecue. He didn't provide one rib. I don't believe it. So I, I, I don't know if he can. His style of cooking barbecue is different from mine, but I'm going to let him make it until he brings me something. I'm bringing some for you on a New Year's Day. We'll see what happens then. Well, I'm from Austin, and I love cooking barbecue. I love learning. I love being busy. And check this. I hate stagnation. Yeah. I hate being stuck. It's just not me at all. Are you motivated by having or not having? Oh, Lord, help us. Are you fine? Do you find yourself being motivated by not having rather than having? Are you the type of person, do you pay your bills, your life bills, so that you can see, or do you not, or do you pay them so you will avoid darkness? I'm the type of person I'd kind of take the positive on that. I pay my bills so I can see, not because I want to exist in darkness or avoid that very much. Okay, last uh, question on this. What are your passions in life? That's something you really, I hope that you have something, Desmond, that gives you passion in life. Last two questions. Is there anything within your life that is worth living for? Is there anything in your life worth dying for? Amen. Gotta ask you that one as well. What gets you fired up? When I was uh, younger and played Little League football many years ago, we would chant a song of motivation which prepared us to win. Fired up, ready for the Hornets. Fired up, da, 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 da. fired up, ready for the Hornets. Fired up. We would uh, rhythmically do that on our uh, thigh pads 
so that we can be prepared to win and scare the other team. With respect to God and as a younger person, you used to be fired up about coming to worship. You used to be fired up about avoiding uh, even the perception of sin and evil. And as a younger person, you used to be fired up about loving the unlovable. But now, all of that seems to have changed. Why? What's happened? You used to be so fired up. Ready for the devil. Fired up. Are you a used to be Christian, truth be told? I gotta ask that. Are your best days, Royce, behind you? Or do you still have some fruit in front of you? You are the person that just loved coaching, uh, coaching Little League football in your community as it was your way to pour some Christian values into young black boys who were like me, who didn't have fathers at home, but now you've stopped doing that. You were so good at coaching Little League football at the public park. Now you've stopped. And now boys don't have mentors. We really needed you coaching the Apaches or the Yellow Jackets or the Hornets or the Raiders or the Steelers or the Cowboys. That was your thing. And you were good at it. And parents enjoyed you doing your thing. As our heightened and as our focus uh, sharpens for the entire year of 2022, we have chosen as a theme, finding fresh fire for our Father. Okay. Finding fresh fire for our Father. As we intend to dig real deep down into an old well of scripture and bring up some fresh water with the express purpose of creating greater fire within all of us. We've got to get fired up. Yeah. There are souls out there that need us, but somehow we stop caring. Am I right about it? Well. I'm right about it. Look at our building today. We can see our online going well. But uh, we have to continue to push and yeah. invite. We got to, we've got to get on fire. Yeah. I wonder if God is going to hold us accountable. Oh, yeah. Church will only be as successful as our motivation. Check this. Fire will motivate us to learn and thus challenge us to execute everything we've learned in the sight of Almighty God. That is. Let me ask, do you intend or plan to be the same person in December 22 that you presently are in December 2021? No. Come on, Rick. Okay, well, let me stir you a little bit more and ask it this way. Um, how are you different? How are you greater? How are you better in December 21, 2021 in comparison to December 2020? Are you any better now than you were 12 years ago spiritually? Oh, yeah. I mean, can you name them? I mean, is it 12? Is it 13? Is it 2? Well, I don't want to be the same. I want to be better. Well, you said that last year, and I'm wondering if you're exactly the same. And if you are the same, you have taken some steps back. The fire is just not there. I need you to know that God wants you and I to get fired up, ready for the new year. Fired up! That's what he wants. He wants us to be fired up for the new year's uh, uh, potential for Jesus Christ. And, of course, there will be changes and ups and downs uh, within that next new, year, next new year, as it always is. But I want you to know that God is going to make a difference in our lives. But it starts with your motivation. It starts with you caring enough to share your faith with the lost. It does. 
We just, uh, that fire is just not there. Based on the fire that you have, could you even start boiling water? Based on the fire. I love that. There you go. Sometimes it just takes a spark to get all of us there. Based on the fire that you have, what could we cook on the stove with your fire? Would the water even turn lukewarm? We'll talk about that momentarily. I think it's important. Being real, hey, we understand that there are a host of experiences which can diminish one's fire. Life challenges such as health issues, family issues, financial issues, mental health issues, neighborhood issues. I hope you are feeling neighborhood issues. If you live in Chicago, you understand what neighborhood issues are as people get killed every day. So you got to understand that some people are really challenged with neighborhood issues. And it's important because they don't know if they should let their kids go to school so they could avoid being shot. So there are neighborhood issues as well as academic issues, all of which uh, Royce can really smother a fire. What's your story or reality as to why your fire is only flickering? How did you get to where you are now? It didn't happen last week. It's probably something that's happened over some years. Check this. You used to have a bonfire prayer life. I mean, it was big. Anytime something would happen, you would instinctively go to God and allow him to handle it. You used to be so positive, giving people the benefit of the doubt, but now you nail people as hard and as fast as you can. You have changed. Your fire is not the same. Church, we simply cannot uh, risk any of us going another day without securing some fresh fire for and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's where the fire comes from. The spark comes from Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. Amen. That's important. I'm trying to motivate you to start a fire. Uh, you see some protesters start fires. I need you to start protesting against the devil and start throwing some darts at him and burn his house down because his house is already on fire. Burn hell down even more because you and I don't plan to go there at all. Okay, I need you to get this scripture, set of scriptures here. Sister Marjane, if you can, Mark chapter 4, verses 19 through 20. Okay. Mark chapter 4, verses 19 through 20. Here it is. But then the worries of this life come to them. Anybody have any worries today? Say amen to that. Amen. I hope I'm not the only one that has worries. Well, don't you know the Bible says not to have worries? Yes, I know, but I sin sometimes in that area. Is that being real? Yeah. That I have to pray about that. Just because the Bible says don't doesn't mean I don't. I have to repent sometimes. Yeah, because sometimes it says don't worry and I find out that's all I do is worry. All right. But then the worries of this life come to them. Check this. Wealth comes with its false promises. Amen. The people also long for other things. Now you know that money is not the be all. Is that right? So people have money and you're still not satisfied because no way does money fill the need of Jesus Christ in your life. Check that and test that. That is true. Many of us could say amen to that. All of these are the kind of things that check this crowd out the message. They keep it from producing fruit and what is seed scattered on good soil like? Well, here is what it looks like. The people hear the message. They accept it. Love this. They produce a good crop 30, 60, and even 100 times more than the farmer planted. That is what happens when you get on fire. 
you start reproducing Jesus Christ? Have you produced and reproduced Jesus in your life this past year? If not, why not? Why, you, why have you played it so safe? I wonder if God is pleased with that. What spiritual fruit has your motivational firebox produced in 2021? It's quiet. And that means none. That's what the quiet means. Are you comfortable with that? Do you think God is satisfied with that? We better get on fire before we end up on fire. Is that real? Yeah, keep it real. Huh? You better get on fire before you end up on fire. And you may be this close from the fire. We just, we're not taking care of God's business. I know that you can uh, commit to God, but I'm asking, will you commit to God looking for greater fire? Or are you and God just good with where you are? Are you good? Okay, is God good with you where you are? See, you may be good, but God said, no, I'm so close to sending you to hell that it'll make your head swim. You, you, if you only knew what I have in my mind for you, and I'm giving you time to get on fire before I put you on fire. There it is. Church, this is our wake-up call. Do we need to throw some water in our face for you to be, uh, for you to stumble and understand this is your time to get on fire for God? He didn't save you for, for you to just come to a pretty church. He saved you so you can go save somebody else. That was the purpose. Did you think it was just for you and your four and no more? It was for you to go and save the lost. You and I have flunked that test. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. We just haven't done our jobs. We've gotten so comfortable. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Sister Margie, please put this one down. Because this one is for me. This one is for the preacher. It says, uh, don't worry about anything, Royce. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Maybe that's my problem. Problem. I don't tell God about everything. I think he knows and I try to handle it all myself. Maybe that's where I'm messing up. I'm not following the scripture. You're trying to do it all yourself. It says, ask and pray and give thanks to him. Verse 7. Then God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. Baby, that's what I've been needing. I've been needing somebody to have peace and watch over my mind and my heart. Boy, I so desperately need that. With all the troubles that I have. To have a piece of peace. Man, I would almost kill something for that. Because it feels so good to have peace of mind. He will do this because. Here's why you get the peace, Sister Karen. Sister Karen. It's because you belong to. Christ Jesus. Uh, God's peace can never be completely understood. Somebody say amen to that. Do you know what that means? That means that you could be going through a living hell but still have heaven in your mind. That irrespective to what's going on in my life, baby, I still have joy because my joy is greater than uh, life circumstances. Cancer will not take my joy. Unemployment will not take my joy. A son not coming home last night or coming home late with alcohol and weed on his breath does not steal my joy. That's why it's important to know where you got it made, and it is with Jesus Christ. What's happened to us? Our fire was just different in the past. There was a time when we had problems. We would just instinctively take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Now all we do is just worry all of the time, me included. Which 
you do all the time. You've got to do better. You've got to get on fire for the Lord. And worry being 100 really means this. It means that you really don't trust and you really don't believe in God. You only believe in yourself. That's what it means when you worry. Because you don't trust God. You don't believe that he can do it. You're actually trying to help God out. Please. You ain't got nothing for God. God is running everything. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's what it means there. We have to get that in our mind. Um, what happened to your peace and optimism? That was such a joy of yours to be so optimistic and trusting God. Now I look at you and you look like you moved into the lead God position and you kicked God out of that and now he's vice God. You're actually trying to boss the creator. Not with your mouth but with your actions and with your heart. God knows exactly what he's doing. Do you trust him like that? I got a big test coming up, a surgical procedure. You want to worry about it or you want to give it to God? What you want to do? Huh? You and God don't need to worry about it. Give it to him. We sing the song, take your birds to the Lord and what? And pick, and pick them back up. I guess it's easier to sing, take your birds to the Lord and leave them there rather than do it. Is that right? I guess it's easier to sing that. But that's what we have to do. I remember when you just enjoyed singing the songs of Zion. Man, you would really lift your voice and let it out and shout it. Now you lip sync the songs like Millie Vanilli. And that's what you do now. Let it out. Amen. Make a joyful noise. That's what you should be doing. Because even if I can't sing like Royce, I can do the best I can. And I'm going to let it out. I'm going to shout it out. That's the point that we have to have. Get fired up. Ready for the new year. Fire up. As a Bible-packing, Bible-believing, and Bible-executing Christian, are you satisfied with your commitment to God, or could it be greater? Huh? Could it be greater? I'm trying to understand if it could be greater, are you willing to make the necessary steps to make it greater? Or is it just talk? This isn't guilt talk. This is about trying to make sure that you and I are committing to God greater in 2022. I don't want you to be the same Christian this time next year that you are today. Because it appears to me that you're real close to the same Christian now that you were 12 months earlier. And God doesn't want that at all. Okay, here's the verse that was read in your hearing so well by Brother Joseph. Uh, Revelations chapter 3. Put this one down. You've heard it before, but let me try to bring up some fresh water in this old well. Revelations chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. All right. It says, here is what I command you to Right to the church in Laodicea. It says, here are the words of Jesus. Here's the piece. I really love this. Here are the words of Jesus. Lamar, it says, who is the amen? Well, I love that. Well, he is the amen. I love that, that uh, translation there. He says, when he speaks, he is faithful and true, Keystone. He rules over what God has created. He says, I know what you are doing. I know you aren't cold or hot. I wish you were either one or the other, but you are lukewarm. That's what it says. You aren't uh, hot or cold, so I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. In other words, you make me sick. That's what he's saying. That 
I can't even stand to have you in my mouth because the taste of you in my mouth is nasty. That's what he's saying. Why have we stopped taking calculated risks for God? I wonder, Lord, help me say this right. I wonder if we're playing it so safe that we've actually become worthless to God. I gotta ask myself that question. Rick, what's the value of you being saved? What's God gotten out of you being saved? I gotta ask myself that. I hope you do as well. What's the difference that Jesus has made the investment in you? Our fire just to me. And I think all of us can agree that our fire is just not the same Desmond as it was when you were a little boy. You can feel the distinction in our singing, in our marriages, in our Bible reading, in our worship service, and yes, even in our soul harvesting, the fire is just not there. It's cold now. That's not who we are. That's not who we used to be. We are better than that. Fire and desire was your name and game. Now you've gotten the gospel of Jesus Christ being reduced down to only bite-sized portions of rules and restrictions without fire. You see the gospel in a very small way that basically you can put it in a matchbox. You don't see it as big where it can save the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his own. You don't see it that way. So God loved me in my closet at home that he saved the only world, the only person who's in it in me. You see the gospel. You don't see it as something that needs to be spread all over the place. Amen? Amen? Are you spreading the gospel all over the place? And do you do it with fire and with intensity? Right. Or you shout so hard when Dak Prescott throws it to C.D. Lamb. You jump and you shout when Steph Curry hits the big shot. Boy, you just jump all over the place. But you come to church and you look like you did. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 we have a scripture that says that God, that Jesus took uh, demons, thousands of demons out of a demon-possessed man. Yeah. And that ain't no big deal to you. How many people you know have done that? That shout worthy. That's somebody say amen to that. That's praise worthy right now. The difference that people have that Jesus has made. Somebody that used to sell crack, now they don't sell crack. That's a big deal. That's worth chat, uh, cheering about. But you can only get excited about Kawhi Leonard. There's a problem with that. Our focus is different. Our fire is just not the same. Has your life become more about the perfunctory rather than productivity? How productive are you for Jesus Christ considering all of the people that you know? I wonder when you get to heaven, if God gets you there and you see all the people that may be in hell that you never told about the gospel, I wonder if they're going to look at you and say, you never told me nothing. Huh? You haven't said anything. You haven't lived it before them. You've tried to be like them to get along with them. And as children of God, life requires that we are peculiar and different. That's the whole idea. It's to be so different that somebody will ask you, hey, man, why do you do what you do? Yeah. That's important. You used to just love inviting people to this very church, yet it's been years since you've invited someone outside of your family to this church. Church, I need you to understand that we cannot survive and thrive 
if all of us are not on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you understand what I just said? Yeah. All of us on fire. Something's going to have to happen for you to get on fire. I wonder if God has to take your wife before you get on fire. He'll do it. Does he have to take your grandson before you get on fire? Don't go there, Rick. Because God will go there. He doesn't play that. Now, lukewarm religion is just about to kill the Lord's church. We're just about to die on the vine. Where's your fire to care? Where's your great commitment that once was inside of you as a younger man and woman? Where's that fire? It's not there anymore. All right. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. Shake, get that one. Get that on your smartphone and I'll meet you right there. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. Love this scripture here. I'll close with it. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. Just then a man came up to Jesus. He asked, teacher, what good things must I do to receive eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter the kingdom, obey the commandments. Which one the man asked? Jesus said, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not be a false witness. Check this, honor your father and mother. Does it say and or or? Well, people like me really have to understand that because I didn't like my father very much. I didn't get along with him very well. So it was easy to obey my mother, but I did not want to obey my father. This scripture has shown me that I was living in sin. You owe your dad a certain level of respect, even if he's a low life. I know it is. I had to live it. But it, the Bible is what it is. Okay. You owe him a certain level of respect. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as you love yourself. I obey all of those commandments. The young man said, what else do I need to do? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go and sell everything. Somebody say everything. Go and sell, and I know you don't want to hear this. Go and sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away so very sad because they, he was so very rich. Wow. Okay, let's talk about it. Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 60. Check this. As an active soul winning child of God, this is just a dream question. You die to have somebody ask you this kind of question as a child of God. Someone is asking, hey, what must I do to be saved? It just doesn't get any better than that. That's what you live for. What good things must I do to receive eternal life in heaven? I said in heaven because your soul is going to spend its eternity somewhere. You will either have your soul permanently set up in heaven or hell. Which do you prefer? There is a big difference between heaven and hell. Oh, I know that. I'm not sure if you do because it looks like to me we're not hustling hard enough to get to heaven. Right? Is that real? Can you tell it on yourself and say, hey, I just need to do better. I need to get a fire. I've been complacent there. Okay. So there is this affluent, motivated, and on fire man that asks this question. What good things do I need to do to get into heaven? This rich man had the thought of what can I buy or what can I get?
gift to get into heaven. Man, you missed the whole thing. You cannot buy your way into heaven because heaven is not for sale. You ain't ever going to have that much money. You ain't ever going to. So you can stop worrying about that uh, now. What works must I perform to enter heaven is a great carnal question. It is. You're thinking you have money. And sometimes when you have money, you think everybody can be bought off. And that's the uh, trick of money and resources. You think everybody has a price, and no, they don't. You'll get yourself burned really hard with that. Next verse, Jesus says, uh, why do you ask me about good or call me good? There's only one that's good, and that's God, and everything that is good. Check this, derives from him. Love that. Do you believe that? That every, you ain't responsible for nothing. Everything you got, Sister Singleton, came from God. All good and perfect gifts come from who? You? Oh, come on. Yeah, no, you say God, but last week you got mad at your son because you said, my car. Huh? Royce has young children. At some point, he's going to buy a car for them, and then he's going to have a whole new perspective of life. We've all had that. I can't wait till you teach him to drive. Now, that will scare you. All right? There's just no doubt about it. Which one would you rather do, teach your children to drive or have a root canal? Have a root canal. Okay. There's no, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Maybe more so as dads. Okay, I, I don't know. So, but, but for me, I'm speaking only for myself on that. It was tough. Church, um, everything good derives from God. Church, do you still have, here it is, the fire for doing good? As that used to be your thing. Sister Pender, do you still have the fire to do good? You do, amen. I say praise God for that. Has life beaten you into being selfless or selfish? It used to make you feel so good inside to bless someone who had a legitimate need, but now it seems like people who are needy just seem to get on your nerves with all of that big. Your fire is different. Somebody says, I'm hungry. Please give food. Man, you hurry up and get on your cell phone and try to not make eye contact with them because I ain't giving your lazy self nothing. You didn't used to be like that years ago. That was different. Huh. Things have really changed. Jesus says, if you want to have eternal life in heaven, then you're going to need to obey all of the commandments. If you want to get to heaven, your faith must possess fire and obedience. How many of the 11 commandments do you know? Did you know that there are 10 and not 11? Do you know what they are? Okay, put this one down. If you got some notes, because many, uh, you online, put these down in your chat box or take your notes. I'm going to go through this because it is important. The first commandment is to have no other God before the God. Most people flunk the test right here with this one. Okay. It's like it's a hard stop right here. What have you put before God is what I'm asking. Most of the time, the question is going to be him, him, her, no, you. That's generally what it is. Number two. This particular one says the second commandment is not to take the Lord's name in vain. The third commandment is to keep the Sabbath day holy. The fourth is honor. Here it is, your mother and father. Five is not to kill an innocent person. The sixth commandment is not to commit adultery. Number seven is not to steal. That used to be your fire. Not to steal. You would always say, I hate a thief. But now something has changed. Last week, you accepted a stolen television set as a birthday present from your woke grandson. Do you still have the fire that you don't bring stolen merchandise into my house? 
Can y'all say amen to that? Something's changed. That now, man, stealing is always a sin. Is that right? <laughs> man, we have now legalized theft. Man, what I work for, I do not want you coming and taking because I worked real hard to get it. Don't steal my rims because I like my rims. Okay, I think that's all of us there. The eighth commandment is not to bear false witness against your neighbor. Old school, you once taught that honesty is always the best policy. You remember saying that? You would always say there's one thing that you just couldn't stand. I can't stand a liar. Remember that? Do you, is it okay for your kids to lie to you? Is it okay for you to lie to God? Is it okay for your life to be a lie before God? That's what we're asking. I know I'm on your toes. Mine have been cut off too. I'm walking around on ankles too. So I get it. But I'm trying to get us to see we better get ourselves together. Next situation number nine or commandment number nine is not to want your wife's, your neighbor's wife which is a, about a value system, leaving that alone which doesn't belong to you. If somebody has a girlfriend, leave them alone. That's not your girlfriend. She's off limits. I'm around young people all the time, and I hear them in the college. Uh, if they ain't taking care of their business, I'm going to take his woman. Man, this is our community. That bothers me. Hey, man, if somebody has a girlfriend, a boyfriend, it's off limits, man. I mean, it is. They break up, okay, then maybe we can holler. But at this point, y'all still together, I'm off limits. It's just the way it is. And then finally, commandment number 10, which is not to covet what your neighbor has. Your past fire was to be grateful for what you have more than what you don't have. That used to be your fire. Things have changed. This rich guy was commanded to obey. So this Elon Musk of that day says, which ones? The one about uh, not murdering someone or not committing adultery or not stealing or perhaps uh, even not bearing false witness. This rich guy is just so typical. He's common. He's just like us. As we always tend to have a fire for the scriptures that we easily keep more than the ones we struggle with. And that's real. We tend to have a fire for the ones that we do. We don't have a fire for the ones that we don't do. Oh, I have a fire for church uh, attendance, and that's great. But somehow I don't have the same fire for giving my money to the poor or submitting to my own husband or loving my own wife. I don't have a fire for that. This rich man asks if Jesus is referring to honoring your mother and father or loving your neighbor as yourself. That's a fire. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? <laughs> Who would say yes? <laughs> Nobody would say yes to that. But in church, you got to say yes. Because it's a lie. Who in here loves their neighbor just like themselves? We better get to it. No big deal. Only heaven's on the line. Verse number 20. This rich man says, I know I'm going to heaven. How do you know? As I've easily done all of these commandments that you just said. What else do I need to do is, man, I'm acing this test. This is a piece of cake. Well, hold the phone because you may find out that this uh, test isn't as easy as you thought. This rich man says, I'm acing this test. This is why friends, and I mean that literally, friends are so very important to all of us as they can help us see our inevitable blind spots, which we all have. We all have blind spots and not just in a car there. All of us tend to measure ourselves 
higher than reality. I always think I should be the starting quarterback even though I've thrown five interceptions in the red zone over the past two games. I still think I should be starting. We all think that. That's important. Here's a new fire for you to consider in 2022. Keep people around you who can help you identify your blind spots in life and in scripture. That's something to consider. Matthew 19, 21, Jesus says, if you really, really want to be perfect, that's what the guy asked. I want to be, how do I become perfect and get into heaven? What I'm trying to tell you, I'm not sure if you really want to hear this, but here is the big ouch right here. Jesus says, check this, if you really want to be perfect in the sight of God, then it's going to cost you that which you value the most. What? It's going to cost you that which you value the most. Jesus says, if you have an idol, it'll have to be released before you receive by God. What's yours? What's mine? Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's anger, envy, insecurity, hatred, giving, or perhaps lust. Please don't ever think that God doesn't know you're real when he is the one that actually made you. Don't try to trick God. You can't jive God. Mr. Musk, let me ask it to you this way or put it to you this way. Since your life is really all about your paper and your money, I'm going to need you to give all of your money to the poor, sell everything that you have, and then come and follow me, and then you'll be ready to get into heaven. Check this. This is another fire for you to consider in 2021. God will not settle for just a piece of you when he desires the entire you. That's just, ooh, there it is. That's the big ouch right there, Desna. He wants all of you, not a convenient piece of you that you just want to share. Uh -uh. No way. This is an all or nothing game. Are you willing to give Jesus all of you in 2022? Okay, what's going to change for you to do it? Maybe this statement here will help you find some clarity. Um, where's your fire for total commitment to God? Where's your fire? It's woo, man, that's what I'm looking. Oh, I get it. You don't have a fire for total commitment. Is that what you're telling me? I don't, I don't have a fire for it. Uh, okay. Um, who do you love or what do you love more than Jesus Christ? Should God decide to take away this identified idol that you just refused to give away in 2022, then what would your fire look like? Does God have to purge you of an idol in order to get you into total commitment? Because trust me, he will do it. He's done it before. All the time. That's the point. Your goal for 2022 is to properly sequence anything that's greater than Jesus in your life, which would cost you victory in heaven. If you want to have something better, then you just got to be willing to give your all as half doing it just won't work. You've got to give it all. Do you think you can play God that cheap and just give him nickels and dimes when he wants the whole dollar? This is God you're talking about, not me. He demands everything. Okay. The fires of hell should motivate all of us to prioritize our lives in a biblical order before the sun goes down, and I mean today. He's not playing with us. Last verse for today, big number, Matthew 19, 22. Since this rich man was so wealthy and since uh, his sacrifice would have been so substantive, check this, he left unsaved. I wonder if that's us today. That he left unsaved as his money was just more meaningful than his Messiah. His money was more important. 
When will you give an exchange for your righteous soul? Please don't say nothing because God knows you're real. All of us have to understand that. God knows you're real. For us, all of us must grow into greater spiritual maturity, moving from complacency to being on fire concerning our commitment to God as our lukewarm religion is uh, making God sick of us. It is. That's what Revelations is all about. Our lukewarm religion is making God sick of us. And he's tired of us. Do you think that God can have us replaced with somebody that really wants to serve him? You go to India, a country, India, it's very common to have a church with 50,000 people. Common. Poor. Because they're hungry for the gospel. Maybe you and I are not hungry for the gospel because we're too fat on ourselves. We're too affluent. Maybe God needs to take some of these blessings away. Then maybe we'll start serving him with fire. He'll do it. Do you have the thought, Lord, do what you got to do to get me to heaven? Do you pray that? No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get crazy now. I don't pray that. Is heaven more important than your creature comforts? That's the important part. Fire means more motivation. Fire means more movement. Fire uh, means more obedience to the Messiah. Understand that fire is intense, not boring. Fire purifies away all of the contaminants. And lastly, and don't forget this, fire burns when someone or something is thrown into it. So you and I better get it together for 2022 because heaven is on the line. Heaven is too beautiful and hell is too hot. Which one do you plan to go to? Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Well, you say that well. Are you prepared? Because prepared means you are a complete sellout. A Uncle Tom Christian, if you will. You sell out. That's what a Christian is. If you're at uh, home and you're trying to figure out Am I ready to get there? Boy, only you can decide that. I want you to know that there is nothing that you should exchange for your righteous soul. Nothing. There's nothing. Heaven is just too beautiful. Uh, no man, no woman, no piece of jewelry, no house, no car. It's just not worth it. Hey, it's nice to have both. It's nice to have all three. But if push comes to shove, which one is number one? What's the most important thing to you? Is it you or is it God? All of us have to purge ourselves out of the way because the truth is we love ourselves more than God. And it's probably going to cost us heaven. But it doesn't have to be that way. Royce, it doesn't have to be that way. To hear the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ, that's wonderful. Now you have a different part of revelations because you realize I have been a lukewarm Christian. I mean, I've been socialized to be lukewarm. Now don't get too crazy about God, but don't go out here and act too much of a fool in the world. So you have to do it just right. <laughs> You're not a sellout. You are somebody that's trying to figure out how to have the world and Jesus at the same time, and you cannot. You have to hear that. You have to believe that. Which means that you have put this into your life and now you are living with that which you now. All of us have to. Not just me, you too, and you too. If you are in Italy, in uh, Milan, Italy, this red, this purple book applies to you too. It's not an American book. It is the book. Okay, don't get it twisted. And then you'll have to understand that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, yes, I've sinned. I worry too much. I've sinned. I love listening to me too much. <laughs> I'm just like you. I have to repent of my sins often, too. Because uh, I'm trying to get to heaven. I'm not trying to prove how smart I am because I know I'm not, especially in the sight of God. 
I'm trying to get better. I'm not trying to go to hell. And then you have to confess with all power. Huh, uh, what's another word for power? Fire! You have to com confess with all fire that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of the living God. And you think a living God has no fire? He has no juice? Oh, you don't know God. He is someone that saved somebody who was, uh, um, when a flood came, he saved Noah and his family. And then lastly, of course, you need to be baptized for the remission of your sin. You've got to have fire to do that. I want you to know it means everything to be saved. I want us to get on fire for God in 2022. We need to find fresh fire for God. Looking at this Bible and coming up with uh, uh, new methods to be able to reach people and motivate ourselves. The message doesn't change, but the method does. We simply have to get on fire. People are expecting us to be on fire. And God's going to hold us accountable. I ask you to come right now, just now, as Brother Royce comes and gives us a powerful song of invitation. Brother Royce. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? Cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb, are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood?
Wilson, praying for my son David, Kelly, who has COVID. Am I reading that correctly? You are. Okay, who has COVID. Please pray for the Ron McGee that I know this pup. Yeah. And tell us the families. We all know what they didn't do with their share tragedy. Many of us already know. Thank you. 
the best they got to stay out of that. Oh. 
were rejoicing at Cherakway, well, I heard I'm climbing each passing day. Hilltops of glory now rise in view, where all shall be made new. And everybody sing the hilltops of glory. And oh brother, oh brother, all you come go. You know I'm safe on the mountain. I soon shall. And everybody sing a hilltop of the Lord Greenland. Footsteps of Jesus before us sleep. We Journey and his walking he evil allurements cannot prevail. I'm on the upward trail, and everybody sing the hilltops of the glory. I now can't and oh brother, oh brother, oh you come. Yeah. 
return to worship, would you please stand? Everyone beside of me. Dominion, we need to do so, please stand. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this message that was brought to us this evening. Thank you so much, Meg. Uh, we let it guide us through, uh, through our week, through our lives. Thank you for uh, safe passage here and give us safe passage home. Until uh, so we meet again at this time next week.